I'm seeing you. On Facebook? Yep. Okay. Then, hey, everybody. This is Tracy at TRCast. Thank you for joining us. Julie is with me, as usual. She's going to be moderating comments and, um, and responding to... Uh, responding to your comments and questions and anything else that you might have for us this morning. I'm going to give it just another minute before we start, um, just so people will have time to um, hop on. And as you may already know, if you saw the event posted um, over the last couple of days, and again, earlier today, we are focusing on our Leathercraft collection today, um, which is all about using leather, of course, and um, cold connection techniques using eyelets and rivets. And um, we came out with this line, I think it was maybe 2015, Julie, does that sound right? Yes, that sounds exactly right. <laughs> yeah, and we actually did two, two groups of components. We came out with the first one, which included our leather strap, which is, um, I'll be switching my camera and showing you guys a whole bunch more stuff, but as long as we're talking about it, I'll show it here as well. So we had a whole um, variety of 10 inch by one half inch leather strap that is made right here in the USA um, in a variety of colors. And at the time, I don't know if you guys will remember, I'm, I'm sure you will, um, there was a 10 millimeter leather strap what did they call that julie do you remember what i'm talking about the the 10 millimeter leather strap yeah there was there was a common name for it um but it was so popular i'm trying to look in my boxes here and see if i have any handy hide there. cut usa no, no. hide cut no no it was the stuff that was really popular and out there in the marketplace and it was 10 millimeters wide and it came in a huge variety of colors and so that really caught our attention so um and people were using it like crazy so we came out with our own leather cord which is a half inch wide but then we also came out with like different endings um that you could use with that um to kind of give options for creating jewelry easily so that and so we had these different endings we had the cold connection eyelets and rivets i'm going to switch my camera so i can show you guys some of these these um components Let's see how the light situation is today a little bit reflective because we have some of our leather is metallic so um, I'm seeing a little bit of, ref of a reflection. Maybe I can turn the light down a little it bit. It looks good to me, Tracy. Does it? Okay. And that's not better. All right. So um, what you're kind of seeing here is a little bit of the... Um... Oh, hold on, guys. Oh, no, that's all right. Um, some of the leather now... This whole collection came out um, several years ago and we expanded on it and there was a lot of parts and then some stuff didn't do as well. So we've reduced actually some of the offerings. We let go of some of the stuff that didn't sell as well. But what we currently have is leather in five colors, a black and a brown, and then three kind of metallic finishes. I think we call them bronze, copper, and silver. Julie will have to correct me because I didn't get out. I'm not looking at uh, the web page or anything. So I'm kind of guessing on what the names are. And then, as I was saying earlier, we came out with some of these um, little 10 millimeter wide ends so that they would work both with that 10 millimeter strap that was so very popular and also with our own cord, our own strap rather. So, um, the way these work is they have a little hole, which you can see, and it fits right over the end of a piece of strap. And you would punch a hole there where you're going to cold connect it. And then you would use either an eyelet or a rivet to connect the, the end, the strap end to the leather. So that was one of the ending solutions we came up with. And then the other one, another style, was this these 
bar ends, I think we call them. And they're about a half an inch. Um, the slot here is about a half an inch wide. So it fits our um, strap just perfectly. So you can slip the end through there and fold it over. And then again, punch a hole and use an eyelet or a rivet to finish that and connect it. And then in addition, um, we came up with some focal components that we liked that worked well with the strap. So we had um, some with breathe and namaste and love and then some different, different um, decorative ones. And the holes on all of these are big enough to accommodate our eyelets and rivets and also big enough to accommodate like two millimeter cord end. If you guys watched my demo a couple of weeks ago, I, I demonstrated a bracelet that was made with two millimeter cord connected here at the ends, but they're also, um, they're also perfect for riveting onto, um, I had another example I wanted to show you guys here I'm fishing for. Um, they're also perfect for uh, attaching to our strap. And so, for example, with this, with this old design, oh, Julie, I forgot to get out the Z hooks. Let me grab a couple of those to show. That's a good idea. Yeah. So in addition to, um, oh, and the E hook, of course. So it, the brace that I'm demonstrating today is going to be closed using one of our E hooks. Um, and that is also made with this, ten, this uh, half inch strap so that what happens is you thread one end through the strap and connect it. And then you make a loop in the other end. So you'll just have to pretend that's not there. So what I would do is make a loop here, connect it, and then I can just slip it closed like that. Um, that's what we will be doing in the bracelet we do today. Um, but we also developed um, what we call Z hooks. So we've got E hooks and Z hooks. So the Z hooks are similar idea. You can thread the end through the closed side of the Z, connect it, and then and then just make a hook on the other or a loop on the other side that you can connect. And these ends, you know, our, our components, our pewter components are slightly soft. So you can open and close this slightly to accommodate your material because um, a leather strap can vary in thickness. So even ours, we um, like this metallic stuff is made is slightly softer and it's a little bit thinner, but our brown tends to be a little bit heavier. So there can be some variation. So the point being, you can widen or tighten this little hook um, to accommodate whatever the material is for that particular bracelet. You don't want to repeatedly open it and close it. That's a bad idea because the metal will eventually work harden and you might and you might snap it off. So you don't want to do that repeatedly. Um, but you can adjust it to work with whatever you're making the materials. So this one was fun. I just wanted to show this one because it showed how I I cut a piece of our strap in half. So it was only like a quarter inch wide. And then I layered the materials. And that I just think that was a fun, um, we're not going to demo that one, but I thought it was a fun one to show you guys kind of the, the playful ways you can use um, the strap. And so what we're going to be doing today, I'm gonna to move this one out of the way. Eileen took a class on this product with Abby yes. and fell in love with it. Abby carries quite a bit of our leather, um, our leather craft collection. I don't know really how much, but I know that she carries quite a bit of it. I know she has the eyelets and the rivets and hopefully the strap too. So. Um, so I'll put yeah, a link she, to her store. Pardon? I'll put a link to her store, The Bead Place. Right, that's a great idea. She's probably, there are probably, um, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing you keep doing, Julie. I'm gonna turn on the Facebook stream and then have to mute it real quick. <laughs> okay, um, that way maybe I can see some of you guys' um, comments while we're going. Pardon? I'll put a link to her store, the bead place. Right, that's a great idea. After me, 
Okay, um, so I got it muted so I can see you guys' comments too. Julie's watching them, but I wanna see, I wanna kind of see what's going on too. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do today is show you guys how to use our eyelets and rivets and the tools that we, um, that we developed. I do have to turn the light back on because I don't want it to be so bright that you guys have a hard time seeing, but I also need enough light to see what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so got to turn some back on. Um, so while we were developing these original leather findings components, we were looking for how we were learning how to connect everything. And so we were buying um, eyelet setters and rivet setters from the craft sources like Tandy Leather was a great informational source for us. I don't know if there are many Tandy Leather stores out and about anymore, but once upon a time they were very you could find one in almost any town and they were just a huge source of leather crafting information and material. So at that time we were buying um, eyelet setters and, rib and rivet setters from them and also the eyelets and rivets. And then we were like, clearly we need to develop our own cold connection stuff. So that's what we did. We, um, we came up with compression rivets and a compression rivet setter. Um, let me see if I have my little bench block. And then we also came up with when we when we came out with the eyelets, which were it was in our second group of components, we developed this this little board that has what you call a dot anvil, and one side of it has um, has a kind of a donut shaped recess so that you can pop an eyelet in there uh, when you're connecting it, and then. You want to keep it, you don't have to use this little board. We came up with this too as like a stabilizing surface for the dot anvil. You can just use it on your work surface. Um, so anyway, we created it so it would fit the little eyelet in there and then you set the eyelet setter on top and hammer and that's how you connect an eyelet. And then the dot anvil is also reversible so I can pop it in there and use it as just like a tiny little bench block surface. So I think what we will do is um, maybe we'll do the earrings first. So in that case, I am going to want to use the eyelet side of the anvil up and the eyelet setter. It is very important. You don't mix up the two. They look similar, but um, the rivet setter will not set your eyelets and the eyelet setter will not just set your rivet. So you really do have to pay attention and not get those mixed up. Usually we have, um, if we're demoing these somewhere, we'll wrap some blue tape or something around one of the tools so we know which one's which and don't get confused. So I'm going to tuck aside the um, bracelet materials. And these little earrings were just kind of a whim one day. I was wanting to figure out I, what it, how it was inspired was I had like a whole little baggie of leather scraps and I'm like I've got to be able to do something with that so I just kind of a cut cut a little shape sort of a feather like shape if you want to really use your imagination and I put an eyelid up at the top and hung a little one of our Swarovski crystal bezel settings and um, just hooked it together and it was super easy so I thought I'd demonstrate that for you guys and I'm going to use the brown leather for it because if we have time, there's another little um, fun thing I might demo. I won't tell you yet, but if we have time, I'm gonna do a little supplement, supplemental demo. So what all I need to do here is I just wanna cut my little shape. So I'm gonna start down at the bottom and just kind of clip away to create a little shape. And I actually, I'm gonna start at the bottom, but then I'm gonna go up to the top and make sure I've got that done so that as I'm cutting the rest of my um, shapes out, I don't mess up and go too high or anything. I wanna make sure I've got that ready. And matter of fact, I'll even go ahead and punch my hole in there. So what you use for punching holes in our leather is a 
what they call rotary hole punching pliers. They have a whole range and there's different brands of these, but they're all, they basically all operate the same. Um, and there's different size holes that you can choose from. For our eyelets and rivets, we always choose the smallest hole, which is about two millimeters. So it's, it's right there and I'm just gonna pop a little hole. Now, if you were being very precise, you may wanna mark your holes uh, where you're gonna mark the spots where you're gonna punch your holes. And we are gonna do that with the bracelet. And my favorite thing for doing that with, you can use any pen really, but I just like to use a little, um, it's a charcoal white pencil or a charcoal uh, chalk white pencil. So I'm gonna mark my spot and use my two millimeter smallest hole and just pop a hole in that. And then I'm going to take now, our eyelets come in, how many sizes do we have of this now, Julie? It used to be three, is it still three? Of the eyelets? Yeah. Let me take a look, cause I can't remember either. It seems uh, like we may have discontinued one, but I might be making that up. And at any rate- size, We have two sizes that we currently offer. Yeah, this is the shortest one, it's 3.7 millimeter. Now the eyelet, as far as a cold connection um, component, an eyelet is basically a tube. So it's a hole all the way through and one side has a flange. So it's already kind of rolled over and finished. And when we set that, when we actually use the hammer and the tools, what we'll be doing is creating a flange on the other side. Um, that will, and that's the process that will secure it to the leather. So because it's got that nice finished one already on one side, I want that on the top. So I'm gonna pop my eyelet through the hole and then I'm gonna set the whole thing upside down onto the eyelet anvil, the little dot anvil. And then I'm gonna use my eyelet setter. I'm gonna double check, make sure I'm using the right one. Show us that tip so we can see the difference of the tool. It is, I'm gonna pop this off so you can see them together. It has a little kind of nub on it that fits right inside the, um, the flange of the eyelet. And so what'll happen when we hammer on this side, whoops, sorry, it fits on the tube side. And then what'll happen is it'll roll those round edges of the eyelet over and create a little flange. So I set that back on my eyelet flange side down. I'm gonna set the setter into the back of it and hammer and hope to heck I don't hit my phone, you guys. So be careful. Now with the eyelet, um, I kind of want to work, if I want a nice rolled flange, I kind of want to work gently and I want to rotate, rotate the setter around a little bit. And then you can see that it's rolling over kind of evenly around all the edges of the tube. And then I can, once it's started that rolling process, then I can hammer a little more firmly and get it secure. And then what I'm doing now is rolling my thumb over that and making sure it feels like it's rolled down securely. And that feels pretty good. So you can see it's got a nice finished side on the back side now too. And what is fun about the eyelets as opposed to the rivets, we'll because we'll be showing you the rivets later. There's no, the rivets are a tube and a cap. So there's no, um, there's no hole, it closes it up. So with the eyelets, you can attach things. It makes it a connection point. So I'm gonna take now um, a big jump ring and I'm going, going to thread that through the eyelet and then hang my jump ring or my little charm on the front. And then before I close that up, I can just pop my earring post or an ear wire, whatever you're gonna be using. You can pop it on there. So uh, Pam, Pammy is asking what type of hammer do you use for setting the eyelets? Any, any hammer, you just want a flat surface. 
Now, I should point out, this is uh, one of Imparts, Impress Art's fabulous little um, one pound hammers. At least I think that's the size of this one. It's heavy, I can tell you that. They're nice. We, use, um, we got a bunch of these from Impress Art when we, early on in our leather collection, days and um we love them because they were small enough to travel with us and and uh so they've been good little hammers but you can use any um any hammer that's just got a flat surface or and i'm going to demonstrate something on the fly here i hadn't planned for this but it's a good thing to it's a good thing to demo um if you don't have eyelet setting tools um you can use the ball peen side of a hammer to set an eyelet so what you would do in that case is you just need a bench block or work surface it's been a long time since i've done this i uh, didn't know you could do that huh i did not know you could do that you didn't oh my god i did not so I'm just use, working on a flat surface now. Um, I'm going to use the ball peen side of the hammer and I'm going to turn the, the finished side down again. And then I'm just going to hammer the back of the tube until it's Is it working? Mm -hmm. It is. I'll, show, I'll get you guys a close-up look here. So it's not as pretty as a finish. And so now you can see it's it's rolled over. I can still feel a little bit of rough edge, so I might go in a little bit more. And I might use a little bit of a forward motion as I'm hammering to kind of spread out the edges of that tube. So I, hopefully you guys can see that, find, find the camera. I'd be tempted and to turn that hammer over and give it one. Pretty little flanged finish, but it's still there and it's still secure. And um, I should still be able to pop a jump ring through there. Yeah, it's still fine. It didn't close up the hole, so it's still a connectable point. So that's cool. So that would be your alternate way of connecting if you didn't have um, one of these eyelet anvils. You could do it anyway. Um, and you guys, we totally forgot to finish cutting the little uh, decorations in there. So I'll, we'll just do that now. I got busy showing how to set the eyelet and I forgot all about it. So I'm just going to go in along the sides and I can be as a, as uh, organic or as precise as I want. I could have used my little um, chalk pencil and, you know, drawn on where I want to cut it, or I can just kind of wing it, which is what I'm doing with this demo. I am obsessed with those scissors. Oh, these are great little scissors. These are little beetle on um scissors they're very nice i could also use um an exacto knife or craft knife for this you know if i felt like that was going to be precise enough for it i could see um an exacto knife working well I just picked up, I have a pair of leather snips, but I don't think that because they're, um, they have a wider blade. I don't think that they would work as well for that, but these are great for just cutting cord and leather generally. They're very nice. I keep a pair in my toolkit. In these little scissors? Mm-hmm. They're good ones. It's messy. You can see I'm leaving lots of little leather debris all over my work surface, but that's okay. 
Pamela really appreciated that you showed that uh, alternative use for that hammer. Um, special tools um, are, aren't always required. And it's nice to yes, see that. It's true. It's true. Um, and it is something that, you know, we've been, we've had this line in our product line for so long, we kind of forget that, oh yeah, there are other ways of doing this. I'm kind of fun, earlier, Clue came on and she was watching because she's going to be demoing leather and didn't want to do the same thing. <laughs> oh, well, good. I'm glad she's going to demo it too. And you know, there's always different audiences. So um, I'll have to watch and see what she does. So I could go in with that and work a little more and get my edges cleaned up. I really do feel like I would love to um, go at this with an X-Acto knife. And, and I think I could get a little more detail if I did that. But in the meantime, that's that little earring design. Super easy. I'm using the eyelets. And I'm going to set this aside, but not too far, because if we have time, I'm going to do another little demo with that. So that's the earrings and the eyelet setting. And I think while we're still just talking about the eyelets, Julie, I will show that other size that we have available. The one I used was the shortest. I think it's a 3.7 millimeter. And then the second eyelet whoop, is a little bit longer. And um, so you can, you can, the shorter ones, the 3.7 works very well for our leather strap by itself and, and or even if you're going to attach something, but you may want to go for a longer eyelet in that case. Um, it kind of depends on how thick your uh, leather that you're working with is too. And Julie, you and I were talking about videos that we have on YouTube. Mm -hmm. that um, kind of details the thicknesses you can work with with the different sizes so julie will post you guys a link to that yes and clue corrected me her leather demo is on thursday okay cool i'll watch for that so does she also carry does clue also carry all of our um leather stuff i think she carries everything did clue oh, ever met a part she didn't like yeah all right, so moving on to the bracelet we're gonna demo. So this is um, just actually came up with this design several years ago when I was when I was coming up with class content for a bead and button. I was I submitted these bracelets um, for a bead and button class, and I don't remember what happened why we didn't actually teach it but um but what we what i submitted was this bracelet design using our strap and just some scrap silk ribbon and the original design had one of our d-ring clasps now those we don't produce anymore but they were um, designed to work with our leather strap so they had that wide opening and then you use two of them and add a little clasp bar. So those were kind of a fun and unique little clasp um, and an ending option for the strap. But unfortunately, we don't have those anymore. Um, but that's what the original design had. And then it also had what we call our rivetables. We had a series of fun little beads that had um, holes big enough for the rivets. And we, we designed them specifically to um, work with the cold connection, the eyelets and the rivets. And we don't produce those anymore. I think if you find them on our website, they're all on clearance. Um, so they are still out there in retail land. You could find some of these um, rivetables out there if you were interested in using those. We do have some large hole spacers that are still in our line. We have beaded ones and we have these twist ones. They also have two millimeter holes. Um, so when I modified this design for our demo today, Instead of the D-ring clasp, I went with the E-hook. And instead of those, those rivetables, I went with our uh, large hole twist spacers. So um, let's get started on this one. The first thing I'm going to do is just take my strap 
and thread that through the slot of the D-ring, about three quarters of an inch maybe. And you can see, well, I don't know if you guys really will notice this so much, but this brown leather is a bit thicker. And I'm gonna pop a hole a little bit back. I'm gonna to wanna to be symmetrical. So <clears throat> on this side, when I make my loop, I don't want to put my connector too close to the end of the loop because it will make it very tight to get the hook in and out of there. So I'm going to put both of, on both ends, I'm gonna go about a half an inch back from the fold. So I'm gonna go right about there. And again, I'm using that smallest, the smallest um, setting on the hole punching pliers. And I might have to use a little more oomph in my squeeze because I'm going through two leathers and it's very thick. But I got it. My, my um, hole punching pliers went all the way through. So the eyelets are um, a two-part component. It's a post and a cap and they're technically compression rivets. So I'm gonna put the back, the post through the back side, right up through the back. So that uh, flat side of the post is on the underside. And then I'm gonna pop that cap onto the top of the post. And I'll squeeze those, to, if you squeeze them together, you'll feel that they're, they'll kind of engage and, um, and that cap will stay on there. So again, I'm going to use our tool. Now our tool is made with a little concave tip so that when I when I hammer on this um, on the back of the cap, it'll keep that little dome. It won't flatten it. If I was it would be possible for me to set this by just hammering directly with the hammer, but it's gonna that would flatten the um, that would flatten the cap, which is fine if that's what you want but I'm going to use the setter so I can keep a nice little dome. And I'm gonna move this slightly out from underneath my phone so I don't whack it. It protects your leather also. Yeah, it does. I gave that a few whacks and to test to make sure it's secure, I'm gonna see if I can get my thumbnail under that cap and I cannot, it feels very secure. So that's done, it's connected, it's good. I am gonna go back here with my leather snips and um, trim a little bit of that off. Kim commented on how much she loves these clasps. And I, I was reminded that they were originally made, the e-hook was originally made for beadwork. That's right. I forgot about that because we, we kind of got so wrapped up Oh gosh, I have a great example floating around here somewhere of a seed bead bracelet with this as a hook. Yeah, and remember all the things Marcia DeCoster used to do with the, uh, oh wait, no, Diane Fitzgerald used to do with the Z-hook. Oh my gosh, Diane Fitzgerald's done some amazing stuff with our leather crafting. So um, here's where I want to figure out how long I want my bracelet. So um, my wrist is small. I would want to make it, you know, pretty you know, six and a half inches, maybe. Uh, my example bracelet I made, it's just a slightly over seven inches. So I think I'll just follow that model. And I'm going to fold that um, loose end over so that it's uh, right about at seven, little, slightly over seven inches. Up a hole on that other end. If I remember, Julie, where that um, seed bead example is, I might be able to grab it before the end of our demo so we can show that. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna set. Folks that have been in the industry a while, that was a Gene Campbell. 
Yeah. I did. Did you guys see my phone move? But that wasn't the hammer that hit it. It was just my finger. So I think it's safe. And that feels secure. Going to trim off the extra. And so here's where I'm going to use my little white charcoal pencil to determine where I'm going to set my eyelets. So obviously, first of all, I want to figure out where my component, let's see. Oh, I wasn't measuring very well, guys. I ended up under seven inches, but that's okay. Um, I just want to find my center line. So this leather section is just about six and a half, which means three and a quarter is my center. So I'm going to I'm an eyeballer. Whoops. <laughs> Eyeballing is okay too, but because I really want to make sure this is in the center, I'm being more careful. But you're teaching. <laughs> I am. But it's that thing again where there's two camps. There's people that measure it and there's people that eyeball. Right. So I've got my spots for those holes and I'm just going to go ahead and punch holes there. But I also need to add um, a bunch of other holes for connecting when I attach this ribbon and also the two um, spacers that I'm going to attach. So I'm going to flip, flip that over and I'm actually going to use a ruler. I need, here's my center holes, one, two, three, four. I need four more holes on each side. One, two, three, four. I can do those just about um, a half an inch apart. And I'm actually, it doesn't really matter which side I mark it on, but obviously I'm marking on the back side this time. What did you call that kind of pencil you're using? I, I love it. Different kinds in there. So this one is that's a charcoal white. And then this one says pastel chalk. And the important, so you can find those at craft stores. Um, the important thing is just that it's white and soft because so it makes it's really easy to make a mark. Do they call those greased pencils? No, it's not a grease pencil. Okay. I am not happy with the placement, so hold on. I ended up skewing everything a little bit too close to the end, so I'm just going to... See, this is what's nice about the charcoal pencil. <laughs> I can just get an eraser and... Charcoal pencil, okay. Two, three, four. Okay, now I can go ahead and punch all these holes. Now we did, Julie, for a little while, we had a, a bigger um, compression rivet um, that required bigger holes in the whole punching process. And we it, still do, Tracy. Do we still carry that one? Yes, we do. Six well, millimeters. The tr you we're talking about the eyelets, no, not, I mean the rivets, not the eyelets, right? I'm talking about the rivets. Oh my gosh. So what was interesting about that one is you could like stack really thick materials, but you needed bigger holes. So for example, our focal pieces, you would have to enlarge the holes to make those work. But man, you could really stack some thick materials together with those ones. For our purposes, we use the smaller ones so much more yeah, that I'm not surprised you forgot about the big ones because I did too, but I'm looking at them right now. I got a little off center on one of those, but that's okay because the ribbon's going to kind of camouflage all that. So I've got all my little holes punched. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is attach, oh, okay. I remember what's next on my to-do list. So I'm going to start attaching this ribbon working from the center. So I'm gonna to wanna to kind of position it. I popped one of the compression rivets up to the back and I'm gonna position that ribbon over the top of it where I want it. And then I'm gonna just where the tip of the compression ribbon, I can feel it poking through the back. I'm just gonna make a tiny, tiny little cut in the ribbon so that that will pop through there. And I'm gonna do that with the next one too. And that one fell out, but that's okay. As long as, as long as the ribbon didn't move. All right, so I've got compression rivet. I've got a little hole cut in the ribbon and the ribbon placed over it. And then I can pop my, um, my focal link over the, the top. Oops. And pop one of the caps on there. Having a hard time seeing. Okay, so that one is connected. And what's fun, what's nice about these compression rivets <clears throat> is when you kind of press them together just enough to engage them, they'll stay. They're not connected, obviously, until you hammer them, but they'll stay in place long enough for you to kind of work with them. What happens with a compression rivet is um, you've got your tube and you put your cap over it. And you, you can see and maybe even hear that that kind of popped on there and it engaged, so now it'll stay. And then when I hammer this, the tube kind of collapses inside the cap and it spreads out and kind of collapses. And that's what creates the, um, that's what creates the, the hold. All right, so I've got those put together. Actually, I can set that out of the way right now. I don't think I need it right where we're working. And again, I'm making sure I'm using the right tool. Put the other one out of the way. Way far away, across the room. So I don't mix them up. <laughs> Feels good. And that one feels good. So then what I'm gonna do um, as now is I'm just gonna work my way down both sides and um, get my other like embellishments in place. And as I go, I'm gonna twist the ribbon. Oh, that looked so much more complicated when I saw it, the finished bracelet. I, I thought it was a, I thought the twist was really going was to be complicated. Be no, it's, it's kind of pretty organic. You can do it however you want it. So again, I'm gonna just cut a tiny little hole in my ribbon so that I can pop, pop it down over the post. And then I'm putting my large hole spacer. Now these, um, we have a few oops, uh, large hole spaces that are kind of flat that will work for that kind of thing. We have one, we have one that's a hammer tone. We have this one that's a twist and we have another one that's beaded. And they're just fun to use to embellish, um, embellish things with the leather craft findings. Feels okay. So now that I don't have another, um, I, the rest of these are just going to be the uh, rivets and the ribbon. I'm not gonna add anything else. So again, I just kind of twist it, position it how I want it. Make a tiny itty bitty little hole right at the top of the post.
and then pop my cap on and set it. And um, you know what's brilliant about these little box, these little work surfaces we made, Julie. You know we were smart. We created a little hole for the tool, mm -hmm. so I really should put it in there instead of tossing it into my lap. <laughs> well, I love the funny little backstory about that block. What's the backstory? Remember, we were sent off to Tucson with the new tools. Uh huh. Um, to and we were going to be doing demos. And when we unpacked, we found these little blocks and we were, what are these? Oh, that's right. Steve and Tierra, the founder of Tierra Cast, had made them just for us to use for our demos. I had forgot about that. And then yeah. in the demos, everybody was like, well, can I buy this? Can I buy this? So <laughs> that's why I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, so we one of the editors wanted to feature it in new tools for their um their magazine like upcoming and it was like uh oh so we had them made i remember that now i'd forgotten and so then we went back on steve we need you to mass produce these and he's like what are you talking about <laughs> and i think the person he found to make them is local that's right petaluma i think yeah as is the eyelet setter i believe one of them yeah yeah i think it's the eyelet setter So I'm setting um, my last little embellishment um, rivet down at this end. And I don't think that I'm going to do the other side, guys, because that's just, it's more of the same and it's going to take time. And I would rather do this other little um, bonus demo after I finish this right here. Pamela Hawkins is on. And Hi, she's Pamela. like, She's taking credit for um, being the one who said we had to make them. That's possible. It's possible. Okay, so you guys can it see. It was I've one of them. She was there that year. <laughs> so you guys can see I've got um, like my ribbon, my embellishment ribbon attached all on one side, and then I can trim this as I want to kind of. I could even go in if I wanted to like twist this, I could use some fabric glue and give it a little bit of a twist or something to, you know, to make it more interesting. This is sticking up over the top of the focal a little bit. So I'm just gonna tuck it underneath. Maybe it's an idea. We'll see if it actually, actually is gonna work. And so that's it. To continue with this, I would just um, start twisting and uh, attaching my um, my rivets on this side, just like that, and then we'd be done. Yay! So this design isn't on our website yet, um, but I will work this week to get it on there, and hopefully the earrings too. But the other little fun thing I wanted to um, try today was um, to see about giving this a little bit of um, color. So there's this fabulous, um, I hope this is still available. We've had this sitting around for a long time. It's some, um, it's called Lumiere. Uh, and it's, oh, it's by Jacquard and it's just for leather. It's paint for leather. So we've used it, um, it before, but I thought it might be fun to try it on this little leather design. And if I remember correctly, there wasn't a whole, it's not a complicated, um, not a complicated stuff. It's basically a water-based um, paint that's made kind of specifically for leather and fabric. So I was just very intrigued about the idea of painting a little bit on this um, on this kind of feather ear, feathery earring. 
Julie, do you what do you think maybe you can find this stuff on the on the internet? Which oh the the purple stuff? Um this paint, this paint for leather. It's it's by Jeff Card. Okay. Oh, that that sounds like a uh, a fabric brand right. that we're going to find at um I will look. I'm actually um Carol um is wondering where she can buy the wooden block and I'm thinking any of our um the big online people I think would um would have it and right. definitely Abby at the bead place and shipwreck beads. So I'm I'm thinking we could get back to her more specifically. Okay. We can look and see who's got it, but I wonder, I think Abby must, huh? Yeah, oh Abby definitely has them at times for sure. I should have picked a brighter color, but this is fun, you guys. I'm just using a very small brush. And I'm I'm thinning it a little bit when I need to. And I hope that you guys can see. Oh, it's, it's showing up really well on the video. For me, it looks a little bit dark. So yeah, I thought it would be fun to get these out, Julie. I haven't played with them in a long time. Yeah, so I did a quick Google, and of course Amazon always, but uh, Black Art um, Art has them, and probably you know your um, fabric departments and your craft stores. Right. Oh, fun! So there's some potential there, you guys. Getting out another color. I'm having so much fun with it. Yeah, Dick Blick comes up for sure. That's a, just a great general art supply source right there. Yeah, I'll bet. This is a pearlescent white. That first color was a pearl violet. Uh, Marika is commenting on us being out of compression rivets. What? Uh, well, I just found out yesterday. We <laughs> just need to get them packaged. Okay, so we've got them. They're just not so in we have them in all the colors. Uh, it's a, um, you know, it's the ongoing pandemic reality. Oh, that right. staffing has been challenging. So um, thank you for your patience. <laughs> and they will yeah. be in We'll sure. put in a request to make sure those get... Uh, those get into inventory as soon as possible. Yes, we will. Okay, so this and is fun, guys. I could I could play with this all day, but <laughs> actually, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find something here. It looks pretty good. Oh my God. See, way back when, Julie, when we first yes. discovered this paint, yes. and we had other colors of leather, I went crazy with it. I, yeah, those are beautiful. And I wonder, I suppose that um, people could find some of our other colors of leather still out there in retail land. But yes. um, I, I had a lot of fun with that stuff when we first found it. <laughs> I, I was so sad to see those 15 other colors go. Well, people like the more basic ones, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. but uh, people also like the other stuff. It's just mm -hmm. always comes down to the majority rules. Yep, yep, yep. So um, that's it, guys. That's our demo for the day. I'm going to work on getting these um, put up onto the website, it's, but it'll take me a little bit. There's photography to be done and instruction writing to has to happen. So um, I'll work on it. Um, and that's all we've got for today. Um, Julie, is there anything else interesting you want to add about the leather stuff in general? Well, we did post a link to the um, YouTube, um, the YouTube videos. I did. Yay. So the, um, there's a lot of information on there. And again, because we made those videos when, um, or, you know, when we first had these collections, when we first did all the leather finding stuff, um, some of that stuff is just not available anymore through us. You might find it in retail land, but it's not stuff we're producing anymore. Um, so, Marika, thank you. Thank you for that compliment. 
um oh kimberly kimberly says she has some of the other colors left that's so that's cool she can play with that anyway um we hope you guys enjoyed this um you can find information about what we currently have available on our leathercraft collection on our website and i have no idea what i'm doing next week so you guys will just have just have to stay tuned and i did like you know today is the 30th so it's right approaching the very end of national craft month so i thought that the leather collection was perfect for that because you know paint and and punching holes and hammering and um you know very crafty so okay um thank you julie and You're welcome um, thank you everybody else for popping on to hang out with us for a little while and um stay tuned to see once i figure out what we're going to do next week i'll um i'll get that posted probably by friday or maybe saturday we'll get it up and you, let you guys know what we're going to do All right thanks see you guys later bye everybody <laughs>